Viewers, thank you. I totally enjoyed the live stream that we did a few days back. It was great having you. We're going to be doing more of this. Oh, you missed it. It's okay. I fully understand because of the time zone. If you missed it, you should hit on now. Look at this video first. We totally enjoyed ourselves. We have like 200 viewers and subscribers watching live. Now, I realized that there were a lot of questions I didn't get to answer on time. And at the same time, there were photos submitted that I didn't get to review. And this episode is dedicated to answering the question and also photo review. I remember I gave a rain check to one of the viewers, James Sanders. He was saying that I have a flash. This is how James Sanders' flash looked like. He wasn't sure that, you know, how do you control the power? It doesn't look like my flash because most of the flash that I use on my tutorials and video lessons would have 1 over 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 3. So if you look at James Sanders' flash, he does have a mode. And mode is important. That's a good thing to do, which means that he has M mode and then S1 and then S2. Well, let me explain what that is, viewers. If you bought a flash like this, that means you can do full manual mode. And then S1 means that it's remote, optical remote, which means that if this pop-up flash fires, that flash will go off. S2 is a little bit more complicated. I believe I did a video tutorial on YouTube, which I first initially published on my premium courses that distinctly taught the difference between S1 and S2. Simple. Let me summarize this here. S1 means this flash goes off, this goes off. Both of these flash needs to be on manual power, which means you need to be a little bit of a lighting genius to calculate light because it's manual power. S2, on the other hand, means that this can be on TTL. And if you set S2 on your flash, it will fire only when it sees the second flash. Are you confused? If you are, please head on to my e-learning website because I totally have an e-learning video that's free that teaches you about this. So what happens is that TTL flash will actually fire twice. The first flash is called a pre-flash. It lights up the room, but it's useless to the exposure. It tells the camera what's the second flash that you need to fire. And it's that second flash is the actual flash. So that's what this camera, uh, this flash do. It sees the second flash, it will complement. So that's what S1, S2 does. So James, I'm going to be taking your question first before I review the other photos that were submitted by Ashwin, Imtiaz, and also Alfredo. Now, I don't have the same flash like yours. Let me quickly show you that you should set it to S1. But be warned, some manufacturers flip the nomenclature, which means that S2 is S1 and S1 is S2. We just have to figure it out. One of it will not work. So I've got a Godox here. I'm going to pretend that I do not know the power. So this is what I'm going to do. If you're not sure, if you look at your flash again, if you look at your flash again, you notice that you've got this symbol of the power going up like a volume thing. Set it to the middle. So I'm going to do the same. I'm going to bring the flash down to 1.8. In my case, it's 1.8. In your case, you see the highest bar, that's full power. The lowest bar means the lowest bar. Set it to the middle. All right. So now the third thing, second thing that you have to worry about is the distance. Very simple. At this point, when you're shooting with flash, there are two things that you can shoot in this world. Number one is product photography. Photos that related to products. And number two, you can be shooting portraits. What are the differences? When you're shooting products of still life, the subjects are smaller. When you're shooting portraits, the subjects are bigger which means that smaller subject, you put the flash nearer. So in the coming episode, I'm going to be teaching you flash in front of the photographer and flash behind the photographer. There are two ways you can be a flash photographer. Let me explain to you what I mean. If I come here and be here in front of my camera, so you notice that this flash is in front of the photographer. That's the first way you can shoot. The second way you can shoot is you can have the flash behind the photographer. These are two distinctly different ways of shooting. Your style, your power, your zoom and modifiers are all different. So there are two worlds of flash photographer. So if you're shooting something that's small, still life, 
put it near the product. There's no point to have the flash like a mile away trying to light something that small. So we'll use this method first. That's easy to learn. So I'm going to put my flash at a predetermined distance. Confused now? Predetermined distance? How near, how far? Do not tell anyone you learned this here. This is a bit stupid, right? We're going on YouTube and I say, do not tell anyone. Get yourself a string like this. If you watch one of my earlier episodes with Rebecca, where I taught 888, this is one of the world's best invention, right? I actually learned this from one of the old YouTube videos. When YouTube was just created, I had this guy teaching this. We know how to do this, but he put it like, oh, why did I forget about this? So I'm going to teach you this. Tie a knot. There's always a chuck that you can remove on your swivel. It doesn't matter where you hang this. So this is what I do, viewers. Put this, stick this in. Right. This is as good as a measuring tape. See what I do? I tie a knot for every one feet. I know. This is confusing. You're probably an American that worked with meter. But here is an interesting thing. Is that every one feet is one stop. To a certain extent, okay, once you pass a certain distance, you're going to get the inverse square law coming in, but that's another day. So this is one feet, this one stop, tie another one, put another one. So we have, you see, I have three knots, that's four feet, that's five feet. How do I know how many feet? Simple, I'm going to teach you a trick that one of my students from India taught me. He said, one, sir, one feet is always hold your two, this is, right, so I'm going to do this this way. Look at this. You just hold this. See, this is about one feet. One feet is this much. So I'm going to put this three feet away. All right, let me get you started correctly. Three feet away. That's it. Tie a knot. The power here is midway. So we're trying to establish what is the power, what is the distance, and what is the F value. James, are you going where I'm going? Power is half, three feet away, what's the F value? I'm working with a pretext that you're using ISO 200. If you're not using ISO 200, I cannot help you. You're just simply asking for trouble. Set it to 200. That's where the lighters cheat sheet come in. Good. So I'm going to come here, pop up this built-in flash. I reset it to manual like what I did in live stream. Set it to manual, that's going to trigger that. So 1 over 8 wasn't exactly correct here. The power is a bit low. At S1, at a zoom of 50, you don't have zoom with your camera. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to focus on here. ISO 200, F8. I'm starting with F8 at a shutter speed of 100. You know by now, shutter speed plays no role when it comes to a flash. Not just yet. So I'm going to cover this and take a shot. Right at this point, we're going to look at the photo now. You can see that it's underexposed, which means it's not F8. Now, I'm wondering whether this goes off in the first place. Okay, it didn't sound, so it didn't go off. One more time. It didn't go off. One more time. It went off. Do you hear that sound? Look at this. Look at the photo now. You don't need to be a genius to figure out that it's overexposed. True? How much you're overexposed? Based on this, you're two stop. But if you're not sure, always flip and look at the histogram. There you go, it's overexposed. That's the white wall with the big pick. Right, so coming back to this, you are overexposed, which means that I'm going to come to my camera and do this. Look at this. I'm F8, two stop. F11, one more stop, F16. I'm going to take another shot now. Boom. Done. James, we just figured out that at three feet away, I know, you're not used to three feet. Let me tell you why I use three feet. Look. You know when they created meters, they used my arm as the standard. Three feet, James, is exactly an arm's length. Have you heard of that term in English? Oh, don't be close to him, be an arm's length. That's exactly a meter. And that's why in COVID-19 pandemic, 
you always hear that, oh, be one meter apart. That's the whole meaning. Does it make sense to you now? How do I know this? Microbiologist by training. Be an arm's length away from that man. Have you heard of that saying in English? That means be a meter away. It all comes from the pandemic of the previous generations. They know that, okay, if he has a fever, be a meter away from him. So that's one meter. What do we learn now? That at one meter away, half of your flesh power is equivalent to ISO 200 at F16. That's beautiful, isn't it? Now we have established that fact. I know sometimes it's difficult for you to remember. I'm going to go one step further. So viewers, I hope you really enjoyed this lesson. That's how you calibrate a flash that you don't know the power. If you do, please head on to my website. Subscribe to the e-learning. You're going to learn more. Not only that, join us on our YouTube exclusive members. We need your support so that we can continue teaching cool stuff like this that have never been taught. These are all trade secrets of professional photographers. 20 years of trade secrets now revealed to you because we all have to work from home. Come here, come exactly to here, which is three meters away. Wrap this with a tape. You notice that I use a triangle way of wrapping this. And put this down, watch, come here, write this with a marker pen. That three feet, you don't need to write this three feet, you know it's three feet. Which means that one eighth of a power at F. 16. That's what you do. Flag it. One eighth of a power at 16. Now let me show you what happens. Let's go a little bit further. So let's assume that you want to put this two feet away. All right, so it's two feet away. Good. And I did tell you that why we work with feet. One feet will always be one stop. So when I put the light nearer to the subject here, the light is going to be brighter. So I can do a few things. I can now come here to my camera if I take a shot now, you know it's going to be brighter by one stop. So we're going to take a shot now. Brighter than one stop. So what I do, simple. Head on to my camera. It's F16 now. Change it to, oh, I'm maxed out. Because it's a natural lighting lens. So I want this to be darker. Simple. Go to my ISO. Bring it down by one stop. ISO, aperture, they are pretty much related in exposure. Take a click now guarantee you correct exposure that's where you move the light nearer you're going to be brighter by one stop okay last one what if you come here and you reduce the power by two stop so if you look at james sander i want you to look at your flash now which means that instead of putting it halfway you're going to bring the power down to scale down so i'm going to come here and go 16 All right i can see you can't see you just remember that lines that you have 1 over 32, good. So 1 over, 30, 1 over 32 at 2 feet away. All I need to remember is that I brought the power down to stop, which means that I just come here and make this brighter. If this goes down, this has to go up. So I'm going to increase my ISO to 200. That's one stop. I'm going to drop this to F11 and boom, take a shot. If I'm wrong, I'm going to quit photography. That's how confident feet and lighting is. There you go. That's the mother of our light, our lightest cheat sheet. I'm going to move this back one more feet. That will make the flesh darker because we just move it back one more feet. Don't believe? Take a shot now. It's underexposed. So what do you do? Make the camera brighter. You have two choices. You can go to your ISO at one stop. Take a shot. Done. Or if you don't want to mess with ISO, you can always go F11. If you look at my camera now, it's F11. Drop my F value to F8. Take another shot. Done. So you can move the power here up or down, which is equivalent every stop to one feet, right up to where you reach the inverse square law at about six or seven feet. That's another tutorial. Or you can make the eyes so go down, go up. When this becomes brighter, this has to become darker. When this becomes brighter, that has to become darker. When this becomes darker, that has to be brighter. Right? That's how you do it. 
And if you're diligent enough, James, go to every feed and put a tag. But you notice one thing. After a while, you don't need this triangular bikini anymore. In fact, after a while, I promise you, you're going to be so proficient with your flesh that after you set this up, before your photo shoot, before your in-law comes and take their pre-Christmas shoot, you can just tie this up, stick it into your back pocket, and be a lighting superstar. And when they ask you, like, how come your lighting is so accurate? If you can, just mention my name somewhere in that reference conversation. So there you have it. The question answered in full. So James Sander, rain check, paid in full. What's in store now is that I'm going to be doing CNC on those photos that were submitted to us during the live stream, which we couldn't answer during the live stream itself because there were so many questions, the response was so good. So we had about six or seven people submitting photos. Of course, I can't do six and seven people now. I've chosen three photographers' work and we're going to go through two photos each. And sorry about the noise, it's really raining every day here in Selangor in Malaysia. Every four o'clock, you rain cats and dogs outside. So that's it. We'll start with the first photo, which is actually from Imtias. This is his first photo. It's a black and white monochrome photo with rows of candles. I love this. That's why I chose this. Now, let me tell you what's good about this. There's an up tilt. You can see all the... I'm a fan of composition that has an up tilt, which means that it looks with an illusion that things go up there. And the candles being repetitive because humans love repetition. That's a pattern. So that's it. What you want to do is that you want to have repetition. A photo with a lot of rules used is a great photo. So we have an up tilt and then we have a perspective and then we have a repetition of the flame. That's really good. So I'm going to tell you what's not good now. So this is how I always do CNC. I'll tell you what's good and then I'll tell you what you can improve. I find that the black and white doesn't work that well at one point where I feel that one of the flames should have a spot color. What is the meaning of spot color? Leave all the flame in black and white, that's fine. Because now I have to think twice to know what that is. If you really look at the photo now, viewer, you realize that you have to think twice. What are they? Are they bokeh? Oh no, it's a candle flame. So photos that need you to think twice is just like an instruction that needs to be said three times. That's a bad instruction. It should be like, go left, turn right, reach there. That is that simple, All right? So what happened is that I would prefer one of the flame to be in spot color. Spot color is what photographers do. They remove all the color, but they leave one part of the photo with color. So I believe that the second or third flame should have that yellow flame. Try that in tears. That's going to immediately make your photo a little bit different. Sometimes black and white may work disadvantages to a monotonous subject. In your case, it's the same subject repeated over and over again. Right, let's talk about the second photo. Look at the rose. This is stunning because it's just up close. One of the rules of composition in photography is that you want to shoot up close. That's like people holding money up close to you. That's like... So close, I can smell it. That's good. What I want to improve on it though, is that the lighting is pretty hard. On the quest of wanting to get a back, low key background, unless that's what you want to do. Because I'm always very careful when I do a CNC. If that's what you set out to do, then good. But it's my job now to tell you what my clients would probably prefer. 20 years of being a commercial photography, my job is not just to shoot photo. My job is to give them exactly what they want and to second guess what they want. So the moment I can do a prediction good enough, they're going to go like, ooh, I love working with Andrew. It's so easy working with him because he knows what we want. That's so important as a photographer. After all, we are shooting photos for viewers. We are all serving people. So here's the thing. You can keep it a little bit softer. Soften the light. Use a high F number, use a strong power. If you watch the live stream that I did, I just established a fact very importantly that the higher your flash power, the darker the shadow. So increase the flash power, put a modifier in there, use a flag, use a mounting board, or you can even put an umbrella. Why? If you subscribe to my e-learning in product photography, I can tell you that a rose 
it's absorbable. You can use any modifier. Soften the light a little bit. And here's the thing. The second point you can Im improve on MTS is that the water sprays are a little bit too fine, too small. And you focus in the center of the flower, which means that it leaves the front and the back when you shoot so close, too shallow. So it's kind of like too blurry there. So make the droplets bigger. So that's where stylists come in. I work with stylists that will make sure that the water droplets are big enough. But I know it's a fun shoot. So all in all, MTS could composition. I can tell you that you're a photographer that's pretty good in composition. What you need to improve on is all those finer skill of composition. What works and what works better and soften your light because lighting is everything. It's a mother of photography. Next up, from Ashwin. He submitted three photos. We're going to go through two photos. And the first one, this is probably a portrait of his wife and his baby. If it is, then congratulations. That's a beautiful baby. Let me tell you what's good about this shot. The exposure is pretty much good. You fire your flash bravely. That's what I like about photographers. I've seen 70% of photographers in the world so afraid to use flash. That's what this channel wants to do. That flash is not that crazy to handle. Fire the flash. It's a little bit hard there. Ashwin, I can tell you that the flesh is a little bit hard there. But, the, you know, I'm not going to talk about the posing that much. It's not, if, it's not easy to pose a mother and a small baby. The difference in size is a lot. So you pull it off like a champ there. But Ashwin, one thing that killed me and killed me again and killed all the viewers now, which I want you to look at, is the background. What were you thinking? Look at the pile of clothes there. Look, my home looks like that too. Seriously. We use the chair as clothes hanger simply because my clothes hanger is full. So the chair is full with clothes, the clothes hanger is full with clothes, and then you know what we do? We, took, we take all our clothes and put it on the table. So that's the hierarchy of where you put your clothes. So no shame there. But what you want to do is that the illusion of always looking at your background. Right, so that's what you want to improve now. In other words, in the quest of firing a flash to get your exposure correct, you ended up having a high, a very bright picture and you use a high F value. This is probably shot at F8 or F11, if I'm not wrong. Am I right there? That gives you a very, very deep depth of field, very sharp at the background and you look at the grill. The grill is bright in color on the window that just steals so much your attention. So remember this, go soften the light and you need modifier. If I'm not wrong, this is probably a front pointed flash. You can always have your flash instead of pointing to the front like so, flip it to the back. I guarantee you it's gonna look nice a million times. Then that's it, drop the F number. Set it on TTL because the flash is automatic, will know what to do. But I wanna bring your attention to the second shot. Great, you realize that the pile of clothes is there, right? If my wife sees me doing this, she's gonna disown me. <laughs> so what you need to do is that you cover it, which is good. But then again, it is still very deep. Drop your F value. When you're doing a shot like this, you need to drop the F value to about F4 or 2.8. That's all. The flash is still okay, a little bit hard, but there's one thing that I want you to be careful with. If you're dealing with kids, and you're dealing with pets, timing is so important. They will not be able to listen to you like a baby. So having the baby looking at the camera with a little bit of that sinister smile is a little bit creepy. No, your baby is a beautiful baby, but that look itself, the timing is working to your disadvantage. So you notice that your wife pull off a very good subtle look, but the baby just look at the camera and go like, <laughs> I'm gonna grow up and be a photographer and run the YouTube channel and rule the world. You, you get what I'm saying? So it gives you that once a perception is etched on a photo, it's very hard to undo. Your job is to make sure that you don't get so much attention from the baby. The baby, I feel, should be looking at the mother and the mother looking at the baby. Drop the F number to F2.8. Focus on the baby. Go down a little bit and just you wait. That's all you do. You just wait. 
And when the baby look up to the mother, bam, take that shot. That's the only one shot that you need. So timing is important. And talking about that, that's why we launched an e-learning in pet photography. With e-learning in pet photography, you actually learn all this trick, how to get the attention of the pet and stuff like that. In the coming future, we're going to do an e-learning in kids and children portrait. That's where Michelle, my resident photographer, come in pretty good. Right. So thank you, Ashwin. Those are lovely photos. Please don't stop now. My job is to tell you what's good and what's bad. Don't let the bad dishearten you that you quit photography. That's how we improve, right? It's C and C. Command and critic, not chante chante. You know what chante chante means? Oh, beautiful, beautiful in Malaysia. Right. Then third photo is Alfredo Vasquez. Thank you for sending her this one. When I look at this photo, I was like, boom, mind blown. I have to do a CNC on this. This looks like a classic Van Gogh oil painting. It's beautiful. I just love the way that you handle the dynamic range. One of the viewers actually asked me, is that if I have shadow and then I have highlight, what can I do? Where do I meter? You don't. You take sequential shot. And Alfredo, I'd like to hear in the comment, how many shots did you take? Eight or nine, right? And then you stitch them together into a high dynamic range shot in your computer, presumably. That's why you have so much of tone at the stones and the cloud, Alfredo. You just nailed it perfectly. So those are all the good points. There's an up tip. Do you see that the riverbank goes up? The cloud provides a pattern and that tree there, that's what I like about it. A good photographer knows where to put the golden point. Go and look at one of the videos that I posted on YouTube or head on to Premium Courses. If you subscribe to it, we have, we have a section in Premium Courses all about composition. Here's the thing. You notice that composition, we have these golden points, one, two, three, four. One, that's, this is one, lower left. Two, and then we have three, and then four. One is always cool. You put it just almost there. That's what I like about it. I call you a creative, annoying photographer. You know you're supposed to put at one, but you're purposely not putting it at one. Just to screw with our brain. That's a good thing. That's what I notice about good photographers too. They show you that they know the rule, but I'm breaking it because I can. So that's what I love about it. What's not good about this? Why are you not coming to our channel more often? You know, share more of this. There's nothing bad about this photo, which I want you to remember. If you go out and get yourself a teacher in photography, there are times that the teacher must tell you what's good, and there are times that the teacher must tell you what's bad so that you can improve. And there must be times where the teacher only have nice things to say. So Alfredo Vasquez, this is a photo that has nothing bad from my opinion. Thank you. So if you like what you learn, do three things. Number one, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell button whenever I have a new video, you'll be notified. Number two, head on to my website here, www.beyond.photos. Check out our e-learning. Because to be honest with you, learning is one of the best ways to overcome all this hardship of pandemic because you need a new skill. At the same time, support our effort as well. Just like you, our career as photographer is affected as well. But thank God we are all multidisciplinary photographers. That's what you need to do. So head on to the website, sign up because we made our courses so affordable. Check out our new lessons as well. Thirdly, join our YouTube exclusive members. Sign up and look at the levels. We have level one clocking in at low, how much? US dollar 399, four, 499. That's a really affordable price. With the YouTube exclusive members, you get exclusive video lessons that's not found on my e-learning, that's not found on the premium courses, that's not found on the free YouTube. It's all there for you. Not only that, if you watch my live stream, you notice that we make really good effort to make sure that the live stream is good. We don't talk and waffle on forever. It's straight to the point teaching. So that's it. Viewers, thank you. Keep sending us questions. Subscribe to those things that I mentioned and I'll see you in the next episode.